Hello, I'm Robin Vincent and welcome to the March edition of Molten Music Monthly. In a remarkably uneventful month, let's check out what's new and exciting in the world of music technology. It's funny, last month there seemed to be something going on that we thought was really, really important. Something to do with bad behaviour and people mucking about. But it all seemed so pointless and long ago. Anyway, coming up this month, Polyend go all sort of modern retro with a synthy sampling tracker. Yui has you wiretapped. Virtual reality gets VST support. IK Multimedia gives away gigabytes full of sounds. Space noise descends from Russia. Boba Fat is simply the best name ever for a module ever. Nerd Seek goes portable. Granurize and Frums compete to be the best granular thing of the week. Pulsar 23 is released. Synther 3 has three things going on. Zorb is the cutest filter ever. Tzzz is a great place to start. What is it with all these funny words this month? Elmira will let you build your own mini Lyra 8. Hypno will integrate crazy visuals into your Eurorack. And Endless is about to get a very timely release. But first, a whole lot of things got cancelled. Music Mesa, Synthplex, Superbooth, and of course your local Synthmeet, which have all been victims of this bloody virus. But this has also prompted a lot of activity in the music and synth communities where online chats, demonstrations, live streams, gigs online, all these sorts of things are suddenly becoming a bit of the norm. Now DivKid has been maintaining a list of upcoming live streams on his website. The link is in the description. And there's all sorts of people doing all sorts of stuff. Sonic State has decided to do a kind of virtual super booth. They're calling it Q Sonic. The idea is at the end of April, the super booth time, about 24th to 26th of April, they're gathering together a whole load of content to release over that time. And so they've been out there inviting manufacturers to either send them gear or to do demos or to send them videos. They're also involving other YouTubers and other news sites and bits and pieces are all getting together to see if we can sort of generate a really interesting time around the time that Superbooth was because loads and loads of manufacturers have been working their little socks off trying to get their products ready for Superbooth and other shows of that nature. And suddenly all that's been taken away. So they've got these cool new products or prototypes or bits and pieces that they want to show and nowhere and nobody to show them to. And so Nick at Sonic State has decided to put together this thing or this umbrella for this event in order to get as much of that stuff out there as possible, which is great. It gives us all a chance to see it. It gives all the manufacturers a chance to show it. And hopefully it will generate a lot of interest and ultimately a lot of business, which is, of course, a very real casualty in all of this stuff that we're in. It's also looking like Superbooth might be doing something themselves and other websites and YouTubers and bits and pieces as well. So it's going to be an immensely exciting time around the end of April when all this stuff starts coming out. Meanwhile, a lot of software manufacturers have been dropping prices or releasing stuff for free to give you something to do while you're sitting there in lockdown. Gearnews.com has been maintaining a list of all the current freebies and money off bits and pieces and a link again is in the description. But these include the likes of Moog giving away the Mini Moog iPad app, Korg giving away the Chaosolator iPad app, Native Instruments have given away a rather nice synth called Analog Dreams, and you can now get Voltage Modular Nucleus for free. Some people are also giving away sample packs. There's a new pack from This Is Not Rocket Science and Heinbach and also Bo Beats. So there's an enormous amount of positivity that seems to be just pouring out of the community at this time. And Lord knows Facebook needs a little bit of positivity at the moment. I mean, the amount of contact and community that's leapt out of this situation is really, is really quite extraordinary and heartwarming. So, you know, we're gonna get through this. Just stay at home, wash your hands. In one of the worst kept secrets ever, in any tease campaign ever, a Polyend have released a tracker sort of thing. Groovebox tracker, sampler, synthy tracker thing. It's a rather nice, sleek, very modern looking, you know, super cool hipster box that has 
built into it a tracker sequencer that operates on this this big screen. What's a tracker sequencer? Well, it's one of those really weird sequencers that's done in in columns, in columns of numbers. So rather than having notes on a piano roll or something musical like that, instead you have a list of numbers which refer to notes and events and stuff that's going on. It's something that was invented in the 80s when computers were a bit sort of crappy but it was a great way of being able to sequence stuff using a very minimalist user interface and a very very fast workflow not necessarily my cup of tea i like very visual things but there's a huge load of people out there who just love that sort of retro vibe you know but this is built into some very very hyper modern bits and pieces so inside it has a sampler you can sample directly into it and mess that about in all sorts of interesting ways. It has a slicer where you slice up loops and bits and pieces and stick them onto to buttons and play those back in kind of a sequence kind of way. It has wavetable synthesis all built in. It has granular grain slice swaying absorbing whatever it is that granular stuff does. It has all that built in as well. It's got line and microphone inputs in order for you to record in. It's also got, weirdly, a built-in FM radio which apparently is something that you can also sample. And of course you've got the grid for the sequencing and parameter editing and a nice big knob for changing things about. It's a very sleek looking piece of equipment. And I imagine it's the sort of thing that people who like uh, box workstations like you know, NPC owners, maybe machina owners, yeah, definitely electron owners, yeah, that's the sort of vibe, that kind of thing. I can see it very quickly becoming the centre of operations around a larger electronic music configuration. So yeah, very, very cool. It'll be interesting to see what people do with it. So Urs Heckman of Yuhi, is there an easy way of saying that? Huey, you, you, he, you, he. Maybe you just, it's best off just writing it down. Anyway, Urs from his company was due to perform at Superbooth demonstrating his new module. I mean, they already did have a module from a Superbooth or two ago called C Visualization, C Vialization or something, which still hasn't quite seen the light of day. Apparently, it is on its way. It's on it's working on it. It's working on it. It's not quite there yet. And they probably would have had it to show at Superbooth again. But anyway, they've got this new module, which looks really rather interesting. It's called Wiretap, which is a rather brilliant name, and it's a CV probe, which sounds intrusive, but what it does, I think, you plug a sequencer or a sequence into it, and from that it generates triggers and gates. So in the modular world, when you've got a sequence running an oscillator, it doesn't necessarily, the sequencer that is, generate the on and off bits that you would get from a keyboard synthesizer. So, you know, you run a sequence from a keyboard and you've got no on, no off in MIDI, and that controls how long notes are played. You don't really get that in modular. You're just running a sequence and the oscillator is changing until you apply some kind of envelope to that sound through its VCA. And to do that, you need something to trigger the VCA to trigger the envelope. And if you don't have gates being generated by the sequencer itself, which as I say, doesn't always happen, then having a, some other form of something plugged into that to create the notes is actually what you need. And I'm not sure I'm explaining that very well, but essentially what Wiretap does, you stick a sequence in and as things change, it generates gates and triggers so that you can apply that directly to a VCA that the oscillator is going through and that can create the note length for you. Now it uses all sorts of logic to give you sort of notes on when notes are on and then other outputs giving you notes off when notes are on. So it does the inverse of the last one or the, the bit before that. So, you know, it's got a whole stack of, of inputs and outputs to enable you to use it in very interesting creative ways. And to me, that sounds like a perfect little module. It's solving a problem, a problem that I hit uh, time and time again with how do I, because I get lazy about patching in envelopes. You've never actually got enough envelopes in your system because you know you don't ever see them as important and then suddenly they're the most vital thing ever. So you're stealing things from other places and triggering those and uh, anyway, or just letting everything freely flow and drone about the place so that you don't actually have to worry about those sorts of things. Anyway, so wiretap, as far as I get it, stick a sequence in, generates gates, and you can apply those gates to your oscillator. Brilliant totally brilliant it can create all sorts of rhythmic interest and bits and pieces uh, in your sequence that wasn't there before so i would have liked to have seen that and i'm looking forward to that coming out eventually perhaps after the civilization 
module it is also upon us. Now I met Jim from a live in tech at Synthfest in October last year and he's the VR man. He's the guy who likes to spend his time with a VR helmet on and actually making music in that space, in that environment. And at um, Synthfest I was able to, to play with some sequences and trigger some loops in Ableton Live, that kind of thing, all within a virtual space, which was quite interesting. Quite interesting. I think you need to spend some time in there because it takes a little while to get used to the controls. It feels very clumsy to start with. But I can see how it could be an interesting space, particularly as, funny enough, we're all now online a lot more. That actually having gigs in that kind of space might be interesting. Could be interesting. Virtual, virtual um, social closeness. Closeness. What's the opposite? What's the opposite of distancing? Closingness. Cl closinging. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Anyway, because in the virtual space, you can just stand in the same spot and you can be completely lawnmower manned into each other. Anyway, I digress. So in his application called Alive in Tech VR, he has now written in support for VST instruments and plugins. So that means rather than just running audio loops or uh, the inbuilt sort of sounds, he's built synthesizers within the virtual environment as well. You can now run your favorite virtual instrument or plugin. You just set it up as you do it it's floating around on a big window and you can move things about with your your hand things your maracas that you have in your hand to, to move things around with and you can sequence them and loop them and set up scenes and clips and all that sort of stuff in an Ableton Live styly so that's there you can also do it with uh, plugins effects you can drop all those on as well it's, it's actually really quite exciting I mean it takes it to to another step I don't think we're all there ready yet quite with all the steps but it gives you another step because you can now take in a broader range of sounds um, and start actually composing and creating because being in that space with the both the restrictions and the unlimited nature of the space around you it brings another way of creating it would change the way you do things which inevitably is reflected in the music so that's really interesting and i love the way that this is continuing to, to develop and hopefully by the time it gets to being really awesome might be the time that vr stuff has got cheap enough to, for me to actually be able to afford it <laughs> IK Multimedia has released a version of Sample Tank 4. Sample Tank 4 is this enormous workstation of sounds. I mean, it's not, it's not the classiest interface or virtual instrument in the world. It's not particularly hip. It's, it's a bit like Halion in Cubase in that it's good, good quality, standard, masses of sounds, masses of presets. It will cover all eventualities that you ever want to do. It's just not particularly hip and cool. However, what is hip and cool is that they've now released a free version called Custom Shop. The idea being that you download this basic free version and then it tempts you to buy more sound packs and stuff to expand the sounds afterwards, which is fine. That's how things work. But what's really nice is that the standard basic set you get is, is over four gigs worth of sounds. I mean, that's bigger than a lot of software since are in the first place, in total. And all of this is built in completely free and it contains all of the mixing it contains all of the effects and the editing that you get in the full proper version the only thing that's missing is the other 256 gigabytes of sounds you've just got four gigs because there's masses masses and that also includes uh, sort of loops and midi grooves and other bits and pieces it's great and it's free so there's absolutely no reason not to have it but i guess you've got to sign up for something and they might send you the odd email but other than that if you need you know, working on anything. You need a piano, there's a piano. You need a guitar sound, there's one. You need a bit of brass, there you go. It's going to have sounds, you know, for every occasion. It's the sort of thing that uh, any every school should have, every person should have on their system, regardless of what they can afford, because you're just going to get a bunch of decent sounds with the potential of upgrading them at a later point if you want. And talking of IK Multimedia, I just did a review of a little box of theirs called the iRig Stream. There it is. What does it do? Well, it plugs into your iPhone or your laptop and gives you high quality input to stream over the internet. So rather than using the built-in microphone that you may have on your laptop or on your 
iPhone, you can plug this in instead. It's powered by the phone or your laptop and stick proper sound in here. Plus in the side, you can stick a microphone and headset, headset microphone. So you've got sound going in and microphone over the top, live stream over Facebook or videos into Instagram. Brilliant, fantastic. I've just done a review of this. It's on the YouTube channel. You can check it all out. I do full demos of how you can plug it in and what it can work with. It's pretty, it's pretty great. Pretty great little box, particularly if now at the moment you're looking to do some live streaming yourself and you're trying to work out how on earth do I get decent sound onto the internet through my phone? How, how do you do that? With something like that, that's how you do it. So check out my video review and see what I mean. Uh, I mean, there's plenty of, of big ways to do it. You can plug all sorts of things into your phone, ultimately with the right bits of hardware and the right adapters. But this was just simple, easy. It sounds good. Uh, it's not a brain ache uh, and it works. So thumbs up for that one. Space Noise from Russia. This is an extraordinarily named module. I have no clue how to even begin to pronounce it because it's all spelled in, in like Russian and stuff. So what is it? Well, they say it's a bit like a pair of hex inverted Jupiter storms. Now, if you know what that is, you'll know that those are impossibly crazy, complex noise, nerve seizure inducing uh, oscillated noise machines. This is two of those. <laughs> right, the problem with being on lockdown in the countryside on a lovely sunny day is that everybody goes out and then starts cutting their edge or cutting their lawn <laughs> and so on. Rather than being surrounded by the eerie silence that one would expect, or well, certainly in an urban environment, in the country environment, you just got more noise. Rather than having aircraft going overhead, I've got uh, him next door cutting his edge. I've got him chopping down a tree over there, somebody else over there doing a bit of lawn mowing. Anyway, space noise. So what is it about? Oh, I don't really know. It's this mad noise machine that's just dripping with uh, craziness and glitchiness and weird timbres and just stuff that's going to melt your head and melt your brain and ooze it all out of your nose. It has things like 14 separate outputs, all derived from a combination of six oscillators. There is some pitch control involved, but it doesn't really have anything to do with voltages per octave. And it also generates a whole load of modulation, or well, at least I think it does, because I don't actually understand what any of the labels mean. But suffice to say, it's completely nuts. I am thoroughly enjoying the aesthetic, the whole Soviet thing, you know, because it's funny how uh, the idea of, uh, of Soviet technology has now become very retro and hip, and you know, I think it's fantastic. I love the look and everything else. It's become a fashion as opposed to an oppressive communist regime. Anyway, I love the look. I'm not in love with the sound. It's a bit crazy, but it's new and interesting, and so I'm offering it up to you. So Boba Fat should perhaps be an awesome edgy baseline sort of machine. It's not quite that. What this is is a dual analog drum generator and it can generate all sorts of uh, kick-ass bass drums, toms, a little bit of actual bass and also hi-hats. You've got a soft mallet side to it, that's one voice, and then the other voice is a hard mallet side. So on one side you're creating kind of soft sub sounds, and then on the other side you're kind of creating solid kicks and bass drums and toms. You've got a range of controls over pitch and level and boost, and you can trigger both sides at once or you can trigger them individually. There's some clever stuff you can do with modulation, which kind of then generates different triggers in response to the triggers that you're plugging in. And it's got a lovely flashy light that flashes in the middle of it. It sounds really nice. You should go and, and check out the video of it. Along with this, it's actually not the same module. They have a separate module called <laughs> HH or Hi-Hat, I suppose, which is a very simple noise generator with some shaping controls in order to give you that closed and open hi-hat sound. They both should be available soon from ST Modular and I imagine they're probably best as a pair. You just buy them together. They should, in fact, just be stuck together. And if you're looking for an easy ride, then I'm afraid they're only gonna be available as PCB and front panel kits. So there's a bit of a challenge for you. Talking of challenges, a company called Neutral Labs is offering up the Elmira. 
Now, the Elmira is an interesting little desktop box that has more than a passing resemblance to the Soma Labs Lyra 8. And in fact, it is absolutely based upon it. Now, the Lyra 8 is this weird synthesizer thing. It's kind of a drone, kind of an effect delay feedback weird box of these touch plates on it that you, you touch those and then something to do with your fingers has, has an impact on the sound and the sound and then you it's an amazing thing it's the sort of thing you sit down at and you lose a few hours going Whoa. anyway neutral labs has taken that idea pulled some bits out of it and given us a mini one and this is three channels of that kind of thing so you've got three sound generating oscillator type things with shaping and you've got a delay and a feedback circuit that then routes that through and back to something else a bit of a filter a bit of a modulation sticking here and cross bits to, to that one and other bits of weirdness going on but this is actually it's sort of a digital emulation so there's a, a microprocessor inside that's doing all the business and you can take full advantage of, of digital noise and bit reduction and it has quite a nice a knob called scratch which just introduces more and more miserableness into the sound but it sounds brilliant it's the sort of thing again you could sit down and lose time over and it's simpler than the lower rate you could probably actually get to grips with it and know what you're doing after a fashion but the interesting thing about it i know perhaps is that it's it's completely open source and so the idea is that you can go and build your own and their neutral labs are not necessarily supplying anything they've just you know laid out the the firmware laid out the uh the bit of materials and the build guide and said there you go <laughs> have a go at that now they are thinking of producing some pcbs and some front panels if enough people um ask them for it but otherwise you download the schematics you download the uh the picture of the front and you go to town and build it yourself build it yourself by producing the pcb as well that has really interested me because I've never really thought too hard about producing PCBs. I've always thought about, you know, making kits. I like a full kit that has everything in it. I can solder it together. I don't have to know anything about it. I just solder it together and then I've got a thing that I did. That's great. There seems to be a bit of a jump from there to actually making your own PCB. But I was talking to the guy at Neutral Labs about it and uh, he was saying that it's actually surprisingly easy. You can do it with, you know, with a few chemicals and some household bits and pieces, you buy uh, blank um, you know, copper PCBs and you can make them yourself with relatively little fuss. So I'm thinking, well, maybe that's something that I could have a go at. I'm sure all you people out in, uh, in video land would love to see me have a go at that. Oh yes. So, uh, so that's interesting and it's certainly, because the actual circuit itself is relatively straightforward. Other than this microprocessor, you've just got a few resistors and bits and pieces on it. So it's a relatively simple circuit, which then goes to the hardware controls. So it shouldn't be too much of a job to, to print that circuit board myself. Maybe. Oh wait, I'm gonna put that on the shelf as one of those jobs that I might get around to one of these days when I have enough time. So if you fancy a little project, then the Elmira might be a good little thing to have a go at. Talking of little projects, how about a little starter kit for DIY synth making? It's called Start Here, which is just a terrible name. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Uh, what have you got? I've got a start here. Have you? What's that? It's a synthesizer. What a synthesizer called Start Here? Yeah. Well, what can you do? Anyway, this is a great little starter kit for making synthesizers. Let's call it something cool. Let's call it uh, Zap Harry. Okay, it's called the Zap Harry synth. Wow, that sounds interesting. Yeah, yeah listen to how it sounds like. I made this myself. Yeah. So anyway, this is from a bunch of people who call themselves TSSS, or T-S-S-S, which stands for uh, the Secret Southside Synthesizer Society. Uh, it's something to do with some people up in Glasgow, right? They run little workshops to build synthesizers, and they've put together a whole, you know, little boxes of bits and pieces, and one of their workshops is based upon this little synthesizer that they're calling Start Here. It's based on the Me Blip anode, which is uh, open source of types, little synthesizer that you can you can buy. 
and they've taken the guts of that and they've slapped it on a couple of PCBs, stuck those together, a couple of knobs, bish bash bosh, and you're away. They've made a few adjustments, making the power supply easier, the audio output better, little things like that. And it combines uh, digital oscillators with an analog filter and lets you build a little synthesizer. How cool is that? Very cool. Comes as a little kit, you can put it together, a little bit of soldering, and, and you're off. And it's a little synthesizer. <laughs> called Zap Harry. It's fantastic. You know, give it a go. I think it's great. And it's only 50 quid. So apparently because of the, the shutdown problems, they had a whole bunch of these kits that they were going to use in workshops, but of course they can't do workshops now. So they have a whole load of these. And for anybody interested in getting into a little bit of DIY, this has got to be a great place to start. Because the Mi Blip is a great little synth. It makes all sorts of fabulous noises and you could just get one of these kits put it together you could even you know design your own case for it you, you know you could do whatever you like do a massive front panel on it whatever you like it's a great way to get started with your start here diy synth now just when polyend that i spoke about earlier were about to take all the limelight about being this fabulous tracker thing <laughs> <laughs> XOR Electronics came along with the NerdSeq Portable. Now, the Nerd Sequencer is uh, a very famous tracker-based sequencer for Eurorack. Uh, it sits in there, you know, spilling all its numbers in the columns like the way that it does, and you read that out to different bits and pieces, and you can sequence the hell out of your Eurorack with that thing if that's the kind of sequencing that you enjoy. Well, now they've decided to take that module out of Eurorack and stick it in its own little case and call it the NerdSeq Portable. And it very much becomes a self-contained unit. Although you can you know, media it up to you know, other bits and pieces, whatever you like, because inside it's got a whole load of sampling and modulation and synthesis and effects. It's got eight tracks of the stuff. You can do loads and loads of things with it. And if you did want to route that back into your Eurorack, you can get one of their expander modules, which would then offer up to 16 CV in and out into your little box. I mean, holding it like this, I have actually no idea how big it is. I'm assuming it's about the size of a Game Boy. I don't know why I'd be making 8-bit sounds either. But there we go. <laughs> That's just the assumptions that I make about these sorts of things. Now, this is still some way off release. I think they just really wanted to steal a bit of Polly N's thunder. <laughs> but considering that they've been the only people doing trackers in this kind of arena for so long, I guess they feel like they really just have to go, oh yeah, look, we're still here. We do trackers and we've got this really cool thing coming out, perhaps at the end of the summer. And it's going to be awesome. And it does. It looks great. I mean, it's the sort of thing that you can sequence your entire world with. It's a bit like that Zoya thing as well. You know, these little boxes that actually contain stacks and stacks of functionality and sequencing and modulation and effects and synthesis and sampling. The whole lot all in a box. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Now, the first of two sort of granular based synths we have uh, coming out this month. The first one is called Granurize, and it looks, I mean, it may just be purely down to the, the graphic, the graphic design and rendering. It looks extraordinary. It looks like a really posh piece of software that you could run on posh computers. And sadly, at the moment, it is kind of only available on Apple Mac, which fits with the whole posh looking posh thing. However, they are working on a Windows version, which is great because a lot of the interface really responds well to touch, which is not a particularly Mac OS thing. Although very cleverly, they were demonstrating it using a clever piece of software which takes your iPad and mirrors the screen of your MacBook or your, or your Apple Mac and lets you control things from your iPad on the, on the thing, if that makes sense. Very clever. Of course, you don't need to go to all that fuss if you just run it on a Microsoft Surface because you've got all the all the tablety touchy stuff built in on a decent desktop style laptop computer. But anyway, so what's this all about? Well, it says here that it's a strange and deeply fascinating piece of software that uses expressive interaction to process sample based sound sources through semi prepared generative structures. Yeah. So this is something that runs in Max uh, MSP8, or it can run in Max for live. And it's kind of an instrument where you have a waveform, where you start putting grains out, and you can start layering things up with, with samples, which can be granulated, which can be grained or not, they can just be regular samples, or with subtractive synthesis, some spectra type synthesis, and then effects. You just layer 
layer the stuff up. So you've got grains going on, being smeared all over the place. You've got samples. You've got layers and layers of bits and pieces. And all of these can be uh, controlled and automated, either through gestures or through automation, writing that sort of stuff in or moving stuff about and recording all of those changes. You've got different windows that change depending on what you're doing, sort of a mixer up here, waveform up here, synthesis and effects and parameters all down here, all of which you can move and sequence and arpeggiate and there's movement and modulation all over the place. It's, I think, rather hard to describe. It's probably better to watch the videos about it, which aren't necessarily going to tell you anything exactly, but you'll just be going, wow, that sounds weird and extraordinary uh, how do i get to have a go so i mean hopefully i'm hoping to get a bit of a go when it comes out on windows because talking to your man andre who's behind granular eyes they would very much like me to try out the windows version uh, once they've got it ready but otherwise it's kind of a sound designer's dream you can have up to a hundred layers of sound moving and cross modulating and being affected over here then pushed over there and pushed, you know in, in space and time and interface and, and such like fantastic what a, an awesomely inspiring and engaging piece of software. I think it, it looks amazing to start with, which is always a hurdle. It has to have an interface which pulls you in, and this just seems to take you on a journey into space. And although I have absolutely no idea what's actually going on, it looks like it could be a lot of fun discovering how to make things go on. The other granular piece of software is called Frums. Frums. There's no consonants apparently in granular world, so F R M S for reasons I can't explain, I suppose. But the idea of this is that it's it's granular based, but it also has subtractive elements, and it enjoys a, a thoroughly good time with F M because every patch can have four layers, and each one of those layers can be four layers of granular, if you like, or four layers of synthesis, or you can take a waveform and make that as an operator and it becomes a four operator fm synthesizer and you can arrange those in all sorts of different algorithms and then you've got control over ratio and envelopes and the way those sorts of things work together with the level of modulation from one to the other but then of course the layers themselves don't have to be operators you could be using a different type of waveform or oscillator or granular as an fm operator feeding back into the ratio modulation of another thing i mean it's a hybrid what can i say but your four layers using these three synthesis engines can create an enormously diverse and weird <laughs> range of sounds i mean granular as we seem to know it is all the rage that's all we want to do is smear grains about the place and bubbly bubbly stuff with samples which is interesting and fascinating but i like how this is combined then with subtractive so something that you can actually grab hold of and go oh, i understand that and know what that is that's good but this way of using frequency modulation is very interesting um and i hadn't thought about that before but the way that and it's well and it's going to be interesting to to sort of understand how different oscillators can work as operators within an fm context is that any good oh, i don't know i don't know it sounds interesting though. A lot of interesting sounds coming out of this one. The Pulsar 23 is now available. Yes, it is. We've been watching the development of this for ages. It was the most fascinating thing I ever saw. I think ever when it first emerged as a prototype, then it was the most fascinating thing I saw as it started to near completion. And then it seemed to have taken an age to get to the point where you could actually possibly get your hands on one. I mean, what is it? Well, it's kind of a four channel drum machine, but it's not. I mean, it's so much more than that. I mean, this is from Soma Laboratories. These are the people who not only think outside the box, but they're in a whole other box outside of some other box somewhere else going, thinking huge thoughts about you know, space, time and, and the world and, and how cosmic things collide with each other. And the, the, the Pulsar 23 is the drum machine outworking of those transcendental ideas i suppose so you've got uh, four noise of some kind generators you've got all these posts around the place that you use crocodile clips in order to patch together or you don't have to use crocodile clips you could just use yourself and grab hold of all these different things in order to create voltages between this modulator to this oscillator or something you've got the touch plate things like you do on the lyra 8 to, to trigger stuff and mess stuff about with. It has loopers built in that are actually CV loopers as opposed to 
uh, audio loopers or samplers so you can you can record CV like automation I suppose and modulation as you do it and then route that around the place you can read it out to your rack and back again if you so wish but honestly it just looks like the best place to play in the world I mean, uh, Nick from Sonic State did a very quick overview uh, last week, I think it was, and just in a couple of minutes he had this extraordinary sound, this amazing beat, this angry, you know, explosion coming out of it. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. It's now available in orange, in white and black, but of course you have to get the orange. Uh, the orange is the only one, really, don't you think? So yeah, I mean, you go on the website, you attempt to purchase it, and you still have to go on the waiting list. But at least we now know that they are being put together and potentially being shit. Well, at least, as I say, Nick at Sonic State has one. <laughs> but other than that, we shall see. But it's it, in my mind, it's the most desirable groove machine out there. And there's no way that I'll ever be able to afford one. The Synthar 3 is a three oscillator subtractive synthesizer that comes out of France. You can either play it as a one big fat unison type note or you can split it out into kind of three note, three voice paraphonic, polyphonic, you know, one of those sorts of things. We all know what we mean by that these days. Well, there's a few things that are interesting about this synthesizer. First of all, it has no patch points. I mean, what? It has no patch points. Where has this guy been? But that actually makes it interesting because there's, there's a trend for patch points on everything. Everything must be semi-modular. I must be able to patch this to this and patch to something else. And it doesn't actually have to be the case. You can still produce analog synthesizers that don't have anything to do with any of that stuff. And this is what this is. It's an analog synthesizer, self-contained. Actually runs via MIDI really, really well. Thank you very much. And does all its modulation by these wonderfully lit buttons. Really, you know, sort of old school scientific light up buttons that you light this to that and that to that and that to that. Nice. So it has a, you know, an easy workflow. You're not trying to work out how to patch something from something else. You're just turning on buttons and things are rooting around internally behind the scenes. So actually, I've got a lot of time for that. I think. The other thing that's interesting is that you can buy it with whatever two filters you like. They have a range of filters, you know, covering all the usual ladder filters, Sen filters, Steiner filters, all these other bits and pieces. You choose which two you would like and they will build that behind the filter panel on the front, which is interesting. I did think that perhaps you could then, you know, use a change them over, but I don't think that's the case. I think you decide at point of purchase and then it arrives with the filters of your choice inside. It's pretty cool. It looks great in its box and I like the fact that it's slightly raised up with a bigger bit at the bottom so that you can put a MIDI keyboard in front of it because this is very, seems to me to be a very MIDI focused machine. It's got a lot of MIDI implementation and a little screen which lets you cope with all of those sorts of things inside and so it's very much built with a, a piano MIDI paradigm in mind. And that, again, sets it apart from the, the trend at the moment, which is just anything just does everything and it's packed in via CV and who knows whether it's a keyboard or not, who cares? Whereas this does care and, you know, fair enough. Now this is a happy little thing from All Right Devices. All Right Devices are famous really for their chrono blob, which is one of the coolest delays in Eurorack. Uh, I've always meant to have one. Uh, I never quite got around to it yet, but it's a really cool delay with this lovely blob character on the front, and it's got lots of good modulation in there. They're on version two of the Chrono Blob now, and it's it's great. It's a good, fun, nice module. They haven't really done much else. Well, they do have this other module that I forget now, but anyway, uh, All Right Devices have just released something new, and it's adorable. Well, I don't know. It's just got a nice graphic on the front that makes you go, oh. And it's a filter called Zorb. So good name also, enjoying the name Zorb. Too many Zs on the front, but Zorb is great. It's a four pole filter. There you go. It offers up five individual outputs for all of your different filter modes. It also has a built-in VCA for tremolo and modulation purposes. And it likes nothing more than being fed back in itself for a bit of self-modulated feedback oscillation resonance stuff so it looks great it looks fun it's got cv control over all the main things it's got a lot of interesting possibilities in terms of uh, self-modulation going on great it's a filter zorb nice 
Visuals are something that's increasingly important in performance, particularly with modular synthesizers where it doesn't look like you're doing a whole lot. You're standing in front of the thing, no one can see what you're doing. So what you need is stuff going on. And Hypno is a module that could help with that. It's a great little self-contained video effects system. Is it effects? Oh, I don't know. It's essentially two video oscillators. So it produces, although it's it's a digital thing, it produces what gives the impression of being analog video noise and weirdness. So out of one side or out of both sides, whatever side you like, you get two signals. It might be uh, lines, it might be squares, it might be noise, like fractal noise, that kind of thing. And you take those basic signals and then you mess them about in craziness. So you can spin them, you can rotate them, you can polarize them, you can colorize them, you can uh, you know, modulate through all sorts of different things and how they react and overlay on top of one another, how they move about, what shines through. Is it negative feedback? Is it positive feedback? And it just creates a huge seizure-inducing nightmare of uh, of visual stuff behind you in a very sort of 80s 90s acid rave style fantastic you've got to love that and it's a eurek module so you drop it in you just patch other modulators and other bits of rhythm into it and it completely follows the rhythm and clock of your system brilliant it's a bit expensive perhaps it's like 600 dollars or something but I don't know anything else quite as simple, quite as immediately effective as that. You can take an output out the front via S video, composite, uh, or it does have an HDMI output on the back. It's also available in a little case. You could have it as a separate unit as well, so it doesn't have to be in your rack at all. And finally, Endless. Endless is Tim Exile's wonderful app for iPad and iPhone which enables an extraordinary level of online collaboration and jamming. It's an app, you all run it, and you just make riffs. You can either use the inbuilt sounds, which now contains uh, synthesizers and sampling, and real live recording as well, and it just creates loops as you go. A little loop, press a button, it's looped, and it's playing with everybody else. And so everyone who's contributing can take what's there and can mess that about with effects and bits and pieces and chop it around, or they can add further music. And then it gets mixed together, and then you can drop bits out, and it gets mixed together, and you chop it up some more. And music just evolves, it generates. And you're all there, and you can chat on it, or you can talk via some other means, and you're all just sitting online with your phone, jamming, making music endlessly, I suppose. It's quite brilliant, and of course the timing of it being released about now is extraordinary, because it's just the sort of thing that, that people could enjoy while they're sitting around not really doing a whole lot else. Uh, I've been playing on it for, for quite a while in the beta version and it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. And I hope to be involved in the launch, which I think is next week. I don't know. I, I need to have a bit of a practice with Tim and we're going to have a bit of a go to make sure that I have some clue as to what it is that I'm doing, that we can make something work. So I'm hoping to be involved in that, which is very exciting. And then it will be available for everyone to try. I have no idea whether it will cost anything or not. I imagine it's going to be free to some degree and then there'll be other things that you can add to it perhaps. I don't know. But it's it's very cool. It's using, you know, it, it, I mean it, it's hampered slightly I suppose by the interface and the fact that it's not always exactly real time when you're playing on things but it's close enough. And also of course you've got the microphone that you're singing into which isn't necessarily going to be any good but you can always plug in another audio interface and then you can start plugging things in properly. Go back to my iRig stream thing here. You could plug in via this and get much better quality audio going in. And then you can export it and stick it on the internet, blah, blah, blah. It's great. It's just a, it's just a fabulous little app that's brilliantly conceived, simple enough for everyone to use and gives you an astonishing amount of fun and interactivity and a sense of community, which is exactly what Tim has been trying to do for a long time with his apps and bits and pieces. He's very much focused on the idea of people coming together and playing together. And this is what this enables through technology and through the internet. Fantastic. So that's called Endless. Look out for that. And I'll be posting about that, I imagine, over the next few days, uh, assuming I get this video cut down and out in time before it happens. So, but I, I understand, I think it's released on March 31st, 
and uh, I'm hoping to be part of all of that. And when it's out, then we should get together and jam. We should do it. You know, we should make it a regular thing. Just get together and make noises. That'd be great. Let's do that. Let's do that. So there you go. That was March. Probably one of the weirdest months ever in the history of humanity, I imagine. But there's still music technology to talk about. There's still gear. There's still software coming out. There's still modules being released. Everyone is still giving it a go. Whether we're at home or or not, or wherever it is that we're locked into, we're all trying to work hard and to get on with it and to keep on making music, to keep on buying gear. I mean, buy stuff. If you're able to, if you're working and still earning money, then I highly recommend that you you buy stuff from either little shops, from independent makers, anyone who can actually get stuff delivered and sent out because you don't want to be putting people in danger by sending them to the post office necessarily but if you're happy to pay for a bit extra to get a courier to pick things up then do it keep the money flowing keep people alive keep ordering stuff so that people who can no longer go to work and build the modules and the synthesizers that they were can can still sell gear and still survive through this because we're going to get through this it's going to be all right. I mean, most of us are in our natural habitat. I mean, for me personally, I'm still working like I was. I have no more extra time because I was already working at home. I was already writing. I'm still writing. I'm still making videos. I'm still producing content. I'm still trying to make music. I'm still looking after my kids. I'm still making the tea and ironing my shirts. You know, very little has changed in my world. But for other people, I know you're sitting around wondering, what the heck am I going to do with myself? Well, shut up. First of all, about you and all your time and your self-improvement. I don't want to hear about it anymore. Just find yourself something to do for heaven's sake. Watch more of my videos. That would be awesome. And then comment on them. Talk about them. Share them. Tell other people about them. Get together and have a, have a watch party online somehow without actually being in the same place. Oh, I don't know. But ultimately, ultimately, you've just got to get out there and, and make some tunes, haven't you? No, but ultimately, you've got to just stay in and make some tunes. Isn't that the idea? And remember, if this has been useful to you, then please do share, subscribe and like and Patreon and all those sorts of things. That would always be appreciated if you're able to do it. And then, of course, what we have this Sunday is our live stream, our monthly live stream. So this Sunday, the 29th of March, 8 o'clock GMT, right here on YouTube, Come and join me for our live stream. We'll have a chat about what the heck's going on, all that sort of thing. Talk about uh, this month's releases, uh, the new products, or synthesis in general, software, modular, hardware, bits and pieces, or we'll just sit there and get drunk together talking about the end of the world. You know, whatever works. That'd be great. So come and join me for that, because that's always a good time. I really, really enjoy that. And in the meantime, go make some tunes.